Max Coleman, the Warren. Championship schedules, body shot artist, likes to bob and weave, known for his punching punish people on the inside. Coming in, and he is relentless to the body. It is a southpaw, but right now he is fighting conventional. Because Warren just came, and of course that jab, Frankie Warren, and caused him to lose decisively. Held him off at the end of that jab, as Clarence Coleman is doing here. Warren claims he had a fight in his hometown of Corpus Christi, Texas, and he didn't tell anybody about the ear problem, so it wouldn't affect his training schedule, but it came back to haunt him during the fight. Well, a man of athletic ability, and of course, I don't think that's a lose. Buddy McGirt beat him. Uh, James Buddy McGirt in the 11th round for the ass with the blue trim, trunks with the gold trim. And really uh, an amazing story just a few days before experience. Having to see his uh, smoke and fire, fire engines, he saw the windows of the house. Terrible ordeal. His children, fortunately, are okay, but he went into that people's fight with that in mind. It really affected him. Well, but can you imagine watching as your children are thrown out the window? Listen, I can't even imagine having it. Yeah, so two. trunks as we said earlier buddy McGirt the man who beat McGirt taught him how to move his head against Frankie Warren not bad advice well the jab is the best advice McGirt gave him and that jab won him a very close first round unofficially on my card Frankie still doesn't look like the old Frank pressure on him he'll start to slow down in about three rounds and he's yours Warren of old to me just yet but fight relatively still and uh, it just may be that Frankie's on the cusp of wearing out and he hasn't got that ability to get started again as he had uh, in previous fights he has not gotten himself in gear he's still in neutral age Coleman six years younger past the middle. this is the USBA junior welterweight championship fight here on Showtime of uh, the new Frankie Warren as opposed to the old. He got inside where he would have popped four, five, six, seven punches. He just put in two slight punches and let him go. And question of being classy. That's two and nine as an amateur. Won the New Jersey Diamond Gloves, the New Jersey Police Athletic League, and the Sugar Ray Leonard Gold. Started or even warmed up by this Frankie Warren. Look at this. It's about 100 to 125 on the canvas, but thank goodness the sun is going down, so that helps the fighters' cause. I think somebody better rub some chili. Oh, nice right of classy Clarence Cole. I don't want to give that all of that out. Crip notes on my wrist. Are you jabbing? Oh, classy Clarence Coleman in the black trunks. The advantage of when he gets into the ring tonight. And he immediately said Warren's legs. He said he noticed through tapes and watching him live that Warren's legs buckle at Warren drops his lips. With his legs going out from possibly because of that middle. He did look awful. That's led a lot of people to believe that Frankie was shot. And that's what we're trying to see today. It Hanging tough here against Frankie Panchito Warren, who as Bernie has pointed out, does not look like the vintage Panchito Warren. In the middle of his forehead, which didn't look like it uh, was totally a uh, jab will swell up all the tissue they look swollen both title with consecutive win record previously unbeaten Henry Hughes and veteran Eduardo Valdez Clarence has gotten his first two rounds and he's starting to fight with his mouth wide open almost gasping for coming up Evander Holyfield and James Quick Tillis Certainly, he's caused it. No effort on Frankie's part to block it or to counter it. Coleman has lived up to his game plan thus far. He said he would jab Warren to the end. And so far, it's paying off. He's been weary in that he's fighting with hair. Quicker because of the cut eye. Warren, Warren in the gold, Coleman in the black. Mark. Warren with the, a body shot, but it was he punches. If Warren punches with the authority that he can to the body, Classy Clarence has a very thin frame. The only way to keep up. Oh. Smiles it off. <laughs> Both very affable. Like 
likable guys as we talk to them over the last few days. Wouldn't want to be in the ring with either one of them, but they're nice to talk to. Warren claimed the USBA Junior Weatherweight title with a 12-round decision over Ronnie Shields back in 86 to defend it once. Interestingly, Shields is now one of his best friends in the corner, and he also works with Warren now. Frankie Warren has really, because he has gotten into gear again. His punches are not crisp and affect classy Clarence by the sheer number. In the black trunks. Scoring, of course, on the attempt to block any it's a threatening weapon rather than He's contented himself with the body at much one of these rounds he's going to start Clarence by surprise because everything has been about combination by Warren and here for Frankie Warren midway point round five and beyond a classic Clarence Warren and it, it isn't going to last long very slowly as Clarence and that's what happens with body shots oh, very thin you get those body shots to the side, you sort of dismount off your horse and decide to fight along the ropes, as is happening to him now. And of course, that's Frankie Warren's fight. There, go, there he goes to the head, Frankie Warren's now starting to go to the head. And a right by Warren got through. And it stacked Coleman's head back in that flurry. So Warren beginning to gain steam, pressing pace. Less than 30. And remember, Frankie Warren comes ahead, so... Continues to punish Coleman on the inside. And Coleman just can't. Combinations as Frankie decides to go. See if Warren can pick up where he is. Warren's cut has been slow, bigger and bigger. Ace Barada, his cut man, one of the best in the best. His son, Jim, is the ring announcer, so it's all in the family in the New Jersey area. We're getting classy in boxing. Well, it's dictated by his size. When you're that little, you're not going to find many fights. With guys, are, oh, nice, painfully, and back comes from. This is out of the left eye. He comes off a very discouraging loss to. Actually, that was too far off, but the one that really is titled for the second time and uh, dominated. Of his face is spattered with drop out for him. More important than that, Frankie Warren has got to step up this difference recently in the Barkley Hearns effect. Galliano, who saved the, the night for Iran Barkley. with a knife. Somebody's putting that damage. Seconds ticking away in round six. Oh. Warren's lack of balance again indicated a nice right hand by Warren. He's stepping up the action. Evander Holyfield, last second preparations as he is getting set for his heavy James Quick Tillis, a 10-round heavyweight fight. Holyfield, the undisputed world cruiserweight champ, stepping up to the heavyweight division for the first time tonight, and it will be coming up head for it. Don't, don't go for his head. Go for his gloves. Go for his chest. Georgie Benton likes the punches, though. Knock the mouthpiece out into about the third. Benefit of mouthpiece. And it's pretty early in the seventh round. These rounds tick away. The cut gets bigger and bigger. There's no therapeutic benefit to the Takes his head and smiles as if to say, you're not doing any damage. Midway point round seven. But that usually means you are. Well, the fight is being the skills, which were gaining him points at the beginning of the fight. There's an athlete going to Frankie Warren. Chasing, 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 landing the big punches. Warren, it seems, would love to get Coleman on the inside and just pound away to the Notice that Clarence is not up on his toes anymore. He is flat-footed. As he moves, he will lead that off. He's round seven. Scheduled for 12. Warren and the goals is even now. I mean, uh, um, the majority of them are landing bounds ago. Oh, lodged the mouthpiece. And that is mouth, and you will see a mouthpiece fly. And there it goes, right into the... USBA Junior in command. It gets jump-started, but now... He Bouncing around and throwing a jab and doing for a change. He must have rested somewhere along the line where it has any effect on Warren. Doesn't seem to be fair. Jersey Joe Walker. But at 5'9. And a heavy line. You gotta stop sooner or later. Confidence all of a sudden, knowing he is on top of the situation. Those little pitter patter jabs by Coleman not having any effect. 
do is holler, you punch up. Final seconds round eight, it is scheduled for 12. The has been owned to the fight starts like almost a five. A classy Clarence Cohen. It looks like number one, the cut has been controlled by Ace Murata. I think you heard Wally's interview with Coleman. And, and that, another, another one. one. Another Norm one. Button looking in, but doesn't warn Coleman. Wally saw it. Well, I think he's ahead by four points, but I, I think that uh, the aggression, see it a lot closer. I don't think the quality of the fight is superior, however, because one man is clearly the uh, the aggressive, the other man. There's that uh, landed. And back goes Warren. Get yeah, that little surge of energy at the beginning of round nine, and now he's reverting. Flat-footed again. Doubling up is Warren to the face of Coleman. And here in round nine. Looking to unleash a blistering attack. There was a sharp shot by Warren. Those are big punches by Frankie Warren. Adam. Indicate the accumulation of punches. The landing on the sides or anything. That's Georgie Benton's attitude. It's come your way. Of Warren saying you're doing beautifully and check out the low blow. The welterweight championship. is due while the cut battle because you don't have a, a good cut man and it's happened so many times it's regrettable. Meanwhile, back here, Frankie's winging. And those jabs by Coleman, annoying, is a shot of the night. I don't understand that. I just can't understand that. If he's a southpaw, but they said going in, they didn't care. It's all academic. It's important at the beginning of your, your career, if you haven't had an amateur career and haven't, haven't faced the terms of Coleman. So much more effective. Warren who got off to a little bit of a slow start, but has come on strong here. Last round we saw the old Frankie Warren, that cutting wood where he just gets there and looks like he's sawing on a tree. Warren, good left by Warren, because he hasn't put Coleman away, perhaps. Those, those three headshots is Frankie Warren. That's the way it used to be. Second's round 10. Warren and goes to the bar. Frankie slides with a nest of the, of the other guy because he slides. By the right by Warren. Is that the fight? He's still going. Coleman again with a surge of energy. And if you lose the last two minutes of run, Coleman. Coleman with some solid uppercut. He can put your heads in there. to the body, but Coleman looking very spry. And the crowd getting behind Coleman, the underdog. And Coleman letting loose oh and up. Toe to toe, he's taking his chance. He's playing his cards. Third to give him credit. A totally different Clarence Coleman. What has he got to look? Coleman. That's Warren punch for punch, but right now he has no recourse. He is desperate. I think his corner understands that he's far enough behind him. Strange to 20 seconds left, round three, round 11. Fatigue written on the face of Frankie Warren as Clarence has decided to lay it all out. It was by far his shining moment. He was, they touched gloves and the 12th and final round. Last round I gave to first round. Obviously on your unofficial oh, score. And I do Clarence Coleman. Oh, another right hand right to the side of the head of Coleman. He'd like one more warm-up, then another title shot. Of course, you better pick an easier warm-up than this. I'm telling you. <laughs> I think he uh, didn't know what to more so Coleman exhausted. Less than 30 seconds left in the 12th and final.